I'm about to reveal a 12 stock dividend portfolio you can use to get started investing $1,000 for dividend cash flow every single week. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hulk here, and you know we love that dividend cash flow here on the channel, but waiting for those dividends every three months is like waiting for your high school crush to finally return your call from 90 years ago. In this video, I'll not only reveal 12 dividend stocks to buy that are gonna put cash in your pocket every week, but I'll show you how to invest $1,000 and how much you'll make. I wanna get started with Main Street Capital, ticker MAIN, one of my favorite monthly dividend stocks. And for each stock here, you can find the dividend yield here on Yahoo Finance, and you see Main's 6.3% dividend yield. And if you go to the historical data tab, we're gonna change the time period here to the last five years, then to show dividends only and click apply. Here you'll see the stock's dividend history, including how often it pays and how much per share. You can see here that Main Street pays a monthly dividend around 24 cents a share. For the quarterly dividend payers like Lincoln National here, we can see in which months and in which weeks they pay. This is gonna be important for planning your dividend portfolio if you're living off that cash flow. You see here that LNC pays its dividend in January, April, July, and October, with it going ex-dividend in the first week of the month. I'll show you all 12 stocks side by side later on, showing you which weeks each one pays out. Finding out how much you'll collect in dividends is straightforward with the dividend amount here on the main page. Remember, dividend yield is always reported as an annual number, so the four quarterly payments added up and then divided by the current stock price. Here we see those four payments of 45 cents a share work out to $1.80 per share each year in LNC dividends. If you were to buy 100 shares, then you'd collect that $45 every three months or $180 a year. If you wanna find out how much you'll collect by how much you invest, you multiply it by the dividend yield. If I invested $2,757 in shares of LNC times that yield of 6.6%, then I'd receive about $182 a year in dividends. Back to Main Street Capital though, and my favorite monthly dividend stock. It might not pay the highest yield, but it is a solid 6.5% dividend and has grown that with no cuts over the last three years. In fact, Main Street has produced a price return on the shares along with that consistent dividends, which is rare for a high yield monthly payer. As a business development corporation, Main Street specializes in loans and equity investments into mid-sized businesses. The company has 182 portfolio investments with the largest representing just 3% of its total fair value. So a hit to any of these investments isn't gonna hurt the shares that much. But as I've noted before, one thing you always wanna watch for in these BDC stocks is to compare the average yield on the company's investments with its dividend yield. In this case, Main Street earns a weighted average yield of 12.6% on its loan investments and pays out that just 7% in monthly dividends. The average yield above a committed dividend yield is a must for dividend sustainability. We're just getting started on our list, but I want to outline how this is going to work, how to invest $1,000 in these stocks to get that immediate cash flow, and how to grow that to live off your dividends. The 12 dividend stocks I'll highlight are all a combination of monthly and quarterly pairs, but have their payment dates set up so you're gonna receive at least one dividend check and sometimes two every week of the year. I'll show you which stocks pay out in which weeks at the end of the video, but you're gonna get an average 7.3% dividend yield across this group. That is cash flow more than five times the market average. You can split up that $1,000 any way you like here. You can make it easy by investing equally across each stock, or I'm gonna show you how much to put in these stocks at the end of the video to get roughly the same dividend amount each week. Don't stop there though. Keep adding to your portfolio and growing that weekly cash flow. Also paying you a dividend in the first week of the month that Lincoln National Corporation took her LNC with its 6.6% yield. Now, before you look at the price chart on this one, brace yourself because it has been nasty. Shares have fallen 67% from that 2021 high. So what's the deal? It's not like LNC and its insurance businesses is the kind of growth stock that exploded during the pandemic. But Lincoln National has been the poster child for what the Fed's fastest rate hike in 40 years has done to this market. You see, the company collects billions of dollars in premiums and retirement product fees, but then has to earn an ultra safe return on that money to make sure it's there to pay out those insurance claims and withdrawals. That means it's only investing in the safe bonds, which have been slammed over the past two years as rates increased. It's similar to what happened with the banks last spring, though Lincoln doesn't have that same deposit risk. Basically, the value of those assets held by the company shrank as bond values plunged and took the stock down with it. But now with the Fed expected to start cutting rates later this year, the shares have leveled out, rising since March of last year, and you've still got an opportunity to pick up this dividend payer at its lowest point in 30 years. 
the company has been able to keep up its dividends. Here you see it goes ex-dividend around the first week of January, April, July, and October. Lincoln has grown that dividend payment at 4% annual pace over the last five years and has plenty of cash flow to keep it up. Then when the Fed does start cutting rates later this year, that's going to drive up the value of the company's bond portfolio along with the stock price. It's not going to happen overnight, but you're going to enjoy that 6% plus dividend and the stock returns on this one and for a safe company in a stable industry. Next up, we've got another monthly dividend investment in Gladstone Investment, ticker GAIN, with its 6.9% dividend. Gladstone is another business development corporation, a BDC like Main Street Capital, lending to those small and mid-sized businesses, the, the ones not quite big enough to list on the stock exchange, but too big to get bank loans. And why I like GAIN here is because it takes a higher equity share than most other BDCs. Almost all BDCs do a combination of lending and investing in the businesses they work with. It gives them that bond-like cash flow and safety, but upside returns as well. Gladstone's target investment is 25% equity and 75% debt versus a traditional BDC that's going to look for less than 10% equity in the companies it works with. The higher equity ownership might mean higher risk, but it's also going to mean higher returns on these investments. And we see that in Gain's history of return on equity, which is well above the industry average. The five-year average ROE is 17%, is over three times the median ROE on that BDC group, and even though near-term return has come down, it's still well above the average for the group. Gladstone's current portfolio is spread across 28 companies in 14 industries, so a level of diversification here that should help continue those returns in any economy. We're going to get right back to that dividend stock list, but if you want to see the five stocks I'm buying for the next 30 years, my forever stocks, look for the link I'll leave in the description below. It's a free report I put together with The Motley Fool, some of the biggest stocks in my portfolio. These are the stocks I'm following in major multi-year themes, with one of the picks up 100% and the group up an average 94% last year alone. That report is totally free. You're going to see the first stock immediately, and then they'll email you the full report with the other stocks. It's an easy way to support the Let's Talk Money community and see some of my favorite stocks to buy. So look for that link or just snap a shot of the QR code here. AbV, ticker ABBV, seems to make every dividend list I do, even with its lower than average 3.5% dividend. Part of that reason is AbbVie is also one of my favorite dividend kings, companies that increase their dividend for more than 50 years. You might not get that higher yield to start, but that dividend is going to keep on growing along with the stock price. The company has a best-in-class pipeline with more than 20 indications in phase 3 or submitted applications. Sales for Scarizzi are up 80% on a year-over-year -year basis last quarter, and Renvoke was up more than 50%. That constant innovation has meant that even as some drugs come off patent, revenue continues higher on new drugs, and the company has been able to grow its dividend by 6.7% a year over the last five. You can see the shares go ex-dividend between that second and third week of January, April, July, and October, usually increasing the dividend in January of each year. Shares of 3M and its 6.6% dividend yield present a special situation for investors beyond that cash flow. The shares have slumped 55% in the last three years on slowing sales growth and just a general market sell-off in conglomerate stocks. Investors just don't want these big hodgepodge companies anymore. And 3M is just that, with its four segments from industrial products, which is about a third of total sales, to electronics, healthcare, which is 24% of sales, and consumer products. And while the company has increased the dividend for 64 straight years, it's only been at a rate of about 2% annually over the last five. But 3M has already filed to spin off its healthcare business in tax-free shares to its investors that could happen as soon as April. So here, if you own shares of 3M, you're also going to get shares of that new company, Solventum, as well. Lately, we've seen other conglomerates like General Electric spin off segments over the last few years and see the shares jump as they unlock that value. That could happen with 3M. Even if it takes a while, the shares are trading very cheaply here, and the fundamental business case for this company is still good. You're going to earn that nearly 7% dividend while you wait for these shares to head higher. Now, this next dividend stock is controversial, but it is tough ignoring an almost 10% yield with shares of Altria Group, ticker MO. Now, if you don't like Altria, you can always pick another stock that pays its dividend out in that second week of March, June, September, and December periods, or just invest more in some of the other stocks on this list. We've got monthly payer Gladstone that pays out in the same week, so you're always still going to get that same weekly dividend schedule. But there is a lot to like here. Even as people shift away from cigarettes, nicotine demand has remained consistent and growing at about 1% a year. Altria has stayed ahead of this by transitioning its products into that smoke-free market and has been able to increase market share against its competitors. So what you get is a consistently growing dividend, a super high yield, and right now, a great price with the stock trading at just eight times on a price to earnings basis. We are halfway through our weekly dividend list, but I want to get a feel for where everyone's at in their dividend journey so I can make videos personalized for your needs. 
let me know in the comments below. Are you living off your dividends now or reinvesting them? If you are reinvesting, do you reinvest those dividends in the same stocks or different ones? Also, let me know any dividend questions you have so I can make sure to make a video in the future. Our third monthly dividend stock here is Gladstone Commercial, ticker GOOD, with a 9.9% .9 dividend yield. Gladstone is a real estate investment trust, a REIT with over 17 million square feet of industrial and office space for $1.2 billion in assets. That is spread across 135 properties in 19 industries and 27 states. Now we all know real estate has been slammed on the jump in interest rates over the last couple of years. Here in NAREIT data, we can see that while REITs did finish up 11% last year, they plunged 25% in the year before and are down almost 5% this year. The company's core property types, industrial and office space have been hit hardest, but it could be an opportunity for brave investors willing to wait it out. Folks, investors are notoriously easy to panic and always seem to sell at exactly the wrong time, but that creates an opportunity for those of us that can wait out the pain, especially as we head into those lower interest rates this year that are gonna support real estate prices. Gladstone made a surprise dividend cut last year that is gonna protect its cash and its current payout and the price is right for the stock. I've been watching the utility stocks this year with Duke Energy, ticker DUK, one of my favorites with its 4.5% yield. Duke serves over 8 million customers in six states across the Southeast and another 1.6 million customers for natural gas. This stock is not gonna make you rich, but it is definitely a slow and steady stock with management forecasting five to 7% annual earnings growth through 2027. That earnings growth combines with the dividend for a 10% annual total return, very solid return on a safety stock within regulated utilities. Duke is another one with some solid potential for price upside. Shares of utility companies are down almost 10% over the last year as higher interest rates draw those investors out of these dividend payers and the money market funds and T-bills. As rates come down and make those utility stocks more attractive, that price upside was gonna supplement your dividend yield and growth in Duke here going ex-dividend in the second week of February, May, August, and November. The Simplify Volatility Premium ETF, ticker SVOL, offers the highest dividend on the list at just over 16% and is one I've highlighted before. Now this fund's strategy is different from the stocks and the stock funds we usually talk about. Volatility is just how much a market or a stock moves up or down in a given period, a gauge of that stock market craziness. The volatility index, or the VIX, is the market's expectation for volatility over the next month, so how crazy investors believe stock prices are gonna be. And while you can't invest directly in that volatility index, you can invest indirectly through futures, options, and ETFs, betting whether that actual volatility is gonna be higher or lower than expected. But then the SVOL isn't really making a directional bet here. It's simply saying that market expectations for that volatility are typically higher than actuality. Shorting those ex expectations, so selling those future contracts against the VIX is a way to capture that fear premium in the market. And this strategy is backed up by research. Testing VIX future shorting from 2005 through 2015, rolling those short contracts over each month, was profitable in eight of the 11 years with an average monthly return of 0.7% and a total return of 118% over the period. The biggest selling point for me though is just that this is a totally different asset class. That premium from shorting the volatility index is reliable and robust. The VIX has a historically negative correlation with stocks. So when stocks go up, the VIX tends to come down and vice versa. The correlation here is negative 0.84, which is very strong and, and means a volatility strategy like this, along with your stock portfolio, can be a great way to kind of reduce the risk along with that high dividend yield. We've still got three more dividend stocks to highlight, including some of the highest potential price increases of the group. But if you wanna see the other dividend stocks in my portfolio and how much I collect each month, check out this video here next or look for the link in the description. Now, another industry I've been following and another opportunity here in regional banks with Keycore, ticker KEY, and it's 5.9% dividend. And Keycore is a smaller regional bank with branches throughout the Northeast and Northwest and strong growth in its commercial banking segment and CNI loans up 11% and its investment banking fees up 15% over the last decade. That investment banking segment isn't something you usually see at these smaller regional banks, or at least not this kind of growth, and I think it's gonna help smooth out the risks to the bank's traditional loan business. Of course, the regional banks have been slammed again this year with the Spider Regional Bank ETF, the ticker KRE, down almost 8% on the fears that that real estate crisis is gonna hit the banks. Now, banks like NYCB and some other regionals have high amounts of their issued loans in commercial real estate, with the higher interest rates and falling property prices, real estate owners are letting a lot of those loans default. So you've seen that crash in bank stocks out of that fear that it's only gonna get worse. But comparing Keycore to those other regional banks, 
You see, it's apples to oranges here. While many of these troubled banks, like Bank OZK here at the top, would have upwards of 50 and 60% plus of their total loans in commercial real estate, Keycor has just 16% of its loan total in that space. So even a crisis in CRE isn't hurting the bank. That sell-off has hit all the bank stocks though, even safer ones like Keycor. And I think it's an opportunity here to lock in that high dividend yield in a good long-term stock. Kinder Morgan, ticker KMI, is a longtime favorite here on the channel for its 6.6% yield and a special way to play oil stocks. Kinder is the largest energy infrastructure company in the S&P 500 with over 82,000 miles of pipeline, 140 export terminals, and a growing energy transition portfolio. You see in the business mix scale at the bottom here, the company is more heavily focused on that natural gas than most energy companies. That could be a big upside as natural gas LNG exports increase over the next few years. What many investors like about KMI is it offers the opportunity to invest in these energy pipelines, terminals, and storage, but without having to deal with that K-1 tax form that comes with master limited partnerships or those MLPs. KMI is a corporation, so it operates just like any other stock. I'm going to show you the full list next, along with how much to invest in each. But another favorite of mine, WP Carry, ticker WPC, for its 6.2% yield. WPC is a $12 billion real estate investment trust with over 1,400 properties across industrial, warehouse, and retail space. The company recently spun off most of its office properties, taking office from 25% of base rent down to just 5%, so reducing almost all of that risk. And most of the portfolio is in the US, though it does book just over a third of its rent from Europe, along with 5% in Canada and Mexico, giving it really a good ge geographic diversification as well. And it's that diversification across property type and location that makes WPC one of my favorite REITs, really reducing your risk in real estate, but keeping the high cash flow potential. The company collects over a billion billion dollars in rent and books 98% occupancy over 172 million square feet of rentable space. And with real estate selling off on higher interest rates, this is another one with strong upside potential once those rates start coming down. Here's that full list of dividend stocks for your weekly cash flow. And you can see, I've set this up with one monthly dividend stock in each week along with some quarterlies. You're going to get that monthly stock dividend each week and then extra payments in some of them. For example, in the second and fourth weeks, you're going to get two checks every single month. I've also split up this $1,000 investment in a way that makes your weekly checks roughly the same amount. On that first $1,000 invested, you're going to collect just over $10 a week and grow it by reinvesting your dividends and adding more each month. Don't forget to get your free report and see the stocks I'm buying for the next 30 years, my forever stocks with the link in the description. Stocks up an average 94% last year alone. Or click on the video to the right to see the rest of my dividend portfolio and how much I collect. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.